stories that Jesus told and how they can help us to understand big and complicated ideas. And this week we're going to look at a different kind of writing in the Bible. We are going to look at letters. The New Testament is filled with letters that were written to different churches around the world just after Jesus had completed his rescue mission. The letters in the Bible were sent to help those brand new Christians and to give them advice about how to live God's way in a world that wants to live its own way. Now, even though those letters were written a long time ago, when we read them now, there's still lots of really useful advice that's relevant for us today. Things like how to be kind, even when we're being treated badly, how to stand up for what we know is right, or how to be a big loving family with people who are different from us. Reading these letters helps us to learn what it means to be a part of God's big family and how to continue to grow into the people that he created us to be, the best possible versions of ourselves. That's right. Letters in the Bible are like a window that shows us what the church looked like all those years ago. But they also give us a picture of what God wants the church to be like today. As Jesus' followers travelled around the world talking to others about the amazing new way of life that God had started through Jesus, more and more people became a part of the church. Some of those new leaders, they stayed in Jerusalem, but others travelled to different towns and countries, and some even went to the far ends of the Roman Empire, teaching people about Jesus and starting new churches wherever they went. These new leaders and teachers, they couldn't be in touch with every church at once. They would usually stay for a little while to get things started, and then they would move on to the next place to try to spread this message of God's love even further. But even though they couldn't stay in every church that they started, they still wanted to be sure that these new Christians were growing in the right way. And they wanted to encourage the church leaders 
and help them with whatever problems they were facing. So, because they couldn't always be there in person, and because telephones and emails weren't invented yet, they began to send letters that were going to be read out loud to the whole church. Today, we are going to hear about a letter that was written by a man called Paul to a church in a place called Colossae, which is where we call Turkey today. Something had gone wrong there, and people were getting a bit upset and confused about what to do. So Paul, one of the leaders who had helped to start the church, he felt that he should write them a letter to give them some advice and to suggest how God might want them to make the situation right again. You see, Paul had quite a lot of experience. By this time, he had been taken to Rome in Italy and he'd been put in prison there because the leaders didn't like him talking about Jesus. Fortunately, being in prison didn't stop him from being able to write letters, so that's exactly what he did. The leader of this church in Colossae was a man named Philemon. And just like most wealthy people in those days, Philemon had a great big house and he even had some slaves. Now you might be thinking, what? A Christian had slaves? What's going on? But if you wait a little bit, you'll soon see that this wasn't the end of the story. Now years before, when Philemon had met Paul and decided to follow Jesus, he offered his big house for the church to meet in. Now Philemon had a slave there called Onesimus and we don't know exactly what happened between them but Onesimus had done something wrong. Perhaps he'd stolen something and because of this he'd ran away from Philemon. Now in those days the punishment would be very very serious for a slave who had run away so this was a really big deal. Onesimus ran and he ran all the way to Rome where he actually met Paul. And while he was there, he heard the good news about Jesus and he decided that he wanted to become a follower of Jesus as well. Now, that sounds like really great news and it was that Onesimus wanted to be a Christian. But what about this big mess that was still left back at home? What about Philemon, an angry church leader and a runaway slave who had done something wrong, but who had now decided to follow Jesus? What a tricky situation. How could things be made right between them again? Well, Paul was worried that even though Onesimus had now said sorry and made things right with God, he still hadn't said sorry or made things right with Philemon. So Paul wrote this letter to help them to make things right with each other. It's strange to think about now because we all agree that slavery is wrong. But in those days there were different laws. And in those days Philemon was in charge of Onesimus and he could have had Onesimus badly punished if he had ever returned. But in the letter Paul writes to Philemon, he says, Because your slave Onesimus is now a follower of Jesus, I want you to welcome him back just as you would welcome me. He asks Philemon to forgive him and to welcome him back, and really importantly, Paul offers to pay Philemon for whatever it was that Onesimus took. You see, Paul had learned that to follow Jesus means that we need to learn from Jesus and we need to treat other people the way that Jesus would have treated them. Jesus wanted to make things right between God and everyone. And so he paid the price and he died on the cross to bring us all peace and a chance to start again. In Paul's letter, he's showing us that as Christians, we should be trying to bring more peace and love and forgiveness into the world. And he's giving us an example of how we may need to do the hard thing to help make a situation right again. But just as importantly, Paul is teaching not only Philemon, but the whole church through this letter, that we are to treat each other as equals. That in God's eyes, Philemon wasn't more important because he was rich, and Onesimus wasn't less important because he was a slave. No. Paul asked Philemon not just to forgive Onesimus, but to welcome him back like a brother. And this is how we should love one another when we follow Jesus. These letters in the Bible weren't just helpful to the people in the churches back then. They're packed full of things that can be really helpful to us now. 
Just like the people in the early church, we can read these letters and learn more about how to live life God's way. In another letter to a different church, Paul wrote that in God's family, everyone is welcome and we are all just as important and just as special as each other. It doesn't matter what country we're from, what colour skin we have. In God's eyes, we are all just as valuable and precious as anybody else. It doesn't matter if we're a boy or a girl, if we are big or small. As Christians, we are all equal. God welcomes us all into his family. We're all part of the big family of God. And we're going to sing about that now. like pink and some like blue some of us like reading books some of us like feeding ducks that's because we're different me and you but god loves everyone he's made god loves each of us in a special specs to wear. All of us have different families. Some of us are very loud. Some of us don't make a sound. That's because we're different, you and me. But God loves everyone he's
I know you all know that song and I hope you had a great time singing along at home. But now we're going to do the craft. So I really enjoyed learning all about the letters in the Bible and we thought that this week we could make some cards that we could send to people. So I'm going to show you how to make two pop-up cards. We've got this one with a dog, so you, you pull the tongue, and the ears pop up. <laughs> and we've got this one here with a cat. Meow! So first of all, I'm going to show you how to make the dog card. Now, if you have a look in your activity pack, you should have two pieces of paper like this. And you need to cut out each of the different shapes. Um, but I've already done mine. So here are mine. So once you've cut out all of the pieces to make your dog card, you need to fold along the dotted lines. So there's one at the top of this piece, which is the dog's face. There's one on each side of this blue piece. You also will be able to see that there's a solid line in the middle, so you need to cut along that really carefully. You might need a grown-up to help you with that bit, and that's important for the pop-up later on. And then on this piece with the ears, you need to take the dog's long tongue and glue it or, or tape it in the middle, just here, um, and stick it in place. And to make the pop-up work, you're going to pull on the tongue to pop the ears up so it does need to be stuck on very securely. So when you're ready to put your card together, um, start with this piece of paper. And you want to, where these edges are folded over, very carefully put glue just along those bits. It's really important not to get any glue on the white part of the card, otherwise your pop-up might not work. And then you want to stick it on to the front of your card. And you want the top part to be level with the top of the card here where your fold is. There we go, so you should have something that looks a bit like this. The next thing you want to do is thread your dog's tongue down the back of the blue part and it needs to poke out through this little slit here. Just like that. And then the top part of the, the um, dog's ears will tuck neatly into your folded bit of blue paper. So you should end up with something a little bit like this. Then you need to take your dog's face and put a little bit of glue just on the back of this tab here and a little bit of glue down the very edges of the face as well. And then you lift up the dog's ears and you glue the face onto the front. Now it's really important do not glue anything onto the dog's ears or tongue, otherwise they won't be able to slide. So once it's glued on, you'll be able to see the top bit of the dog's head from the back of the card, and you'll see the face on the front. Now we're nearly done. The next thing to do is stick on the dog's body. So you can put glue all over that bit. And then you want to stick it onto the front on the bottom here. So again, make sure you don't put any glue on the dog's tongue. There we go. And last of all, the dog's nose. There we are. So your card is finished. And now if you very gently pull on the dog's tongue, the ears will pop up. I'll show you again. Here we are. So if you like, you can write a message on the bottom of the dog's ears, or you can write a message inside the card. Pop it in the post to somebody and make their day. Now I'm going to show you how to make the cat card. So if you have a look in your activity pack, you should have um, a piece of paper with the templates on it that looks like this and you'll need your other strip of card. And um, the first thing you need to do is cut out all of your pieces. I've already done mine. So you're gonna have two little ears. You're going to have the front legs. 
the back legs and tail, the face, and this piece becomes the body. And then you'll need to take this piece of paper and fold it in half, and that is going to be your card. There's a little bit of folding to do on these pieces as well. If you take the legs, you need to fold up the very bottom bit of the feet, like that, to make the paws. So you're just folding just this little bit here, and that is going to give you a little tab to glue it on. And do the same for the back. I should have said, if you want to have a different coloured cat, then you can colour yours in. Um, my cat's going to be white, so I'm just going to leave it like this for now, but it will be easier to colour it in before you've stuck it together. And then on this piece, which is the body, you can see it's got, um, it's got some flat edges here, so you need to fold those in. And again, that just makes a little tab to help you to glue your cat together. So, I'm going to begin by sticking the ears onto my cat. I'm going to use glue, but again, you could use tape if you prefer. And um, I'm going to quickly draw on a little face. So, ears, two eyes, and mouth, and some whiskers. There we go. There's my cat. So now that the face is done, it's time to stick my cat together. So if you open up your card, on the inside, you want to start with the cat's tail and back legs. So I'm going to glue those here, and do you see where the paws overlap just there where the fold is on the card? I'm going to put glue all over the back, like that, and then I'm going to stick it in place. So you've got something a bit like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue along the one of the tabs to stick my cat's body on. So I'm going to put glue just on that edge on the tab. You need to try and put your glue on really neatly when you're doing pop-up cards because if you get glue on the wrong bit you might glue your card closed. And then I'm going to stick the body on like this. So now I've got my cat's tail and back legs and I've got the body coming forward like this. And then the next thing to do is stick on the cat's front legs. So you need to put some glue on the front of the body here and you need to put some glue on the paws and glue the cat's paws onto the bottom part of your card. Like that. Then I'm going to put some glue on the bottom of the cat's paws, like this. And I'm going to stick them down. Just like that. So, here we are. That you can start to see now how your cat's going to pop up, but it doesn't have a head yet. So we need to make sure that we stick the head on. So again, just put a little bit of glue on the top of the cat's body and then press the head in place. And there we go. There's my cat pop-up card. Whoa! I love learning about how we're all part of one big family and how everyone is welcome in God's special family. Even aliens like us! Yes, and I love learning about letters too. How they are ways that we can learn from other members of God's family, even if they lived in a different place, or even a different time in history. How we can all help each other learn how God wants us to live. I know! I wonder what we're going to learn next week. I can't wait to find out more about this special book. Bye! Bye.